Hello guys, welcome back to Geology Concepts and this is the second video of the Ignis Petrology series. In this we will discuss about magma, its composition and bovin reaction series. Okay, so let's dive into it. First, we have magma and its composition. So what is magma? Magma is nothing but a rock fluid beneath the earth's surface and uh, in, in a very huge amount. So that is called magma now this composition can be analyzed in the basis of chemical composition where 59 percent is sio2 you have to remember this data 59 percent is sio2 there is uh, there is al2o3 feo fe2o3 cao al2o3 is the second highest you can say oxide present there then there are elemental form you have you have oxygen as the highest then silicon aluminum and fe this you have to remember there is there is also presence of calcium na potassium magnesium titanium etc but oxygen is the highest and then silicon then aluminum and then fe you have to remember this okay next moving on there is a mineralogical composition if, if you see mineralogical composition feldspar gains the highest spot with 59 percent okay 59 percent of minerals 59% of all the mineral is feldspar, then my pyroxene and amphibole 17%, quartz 12%, mica 4%. Okay, now so this is for the magma and its composition. Next is we have what bovin reaction series. Now, bovin reaction series is all about uh, solidifying and of magma, how ma magma solidifies. So, this it answers this question how it solidifies. Okay, and uh, that order in which it solidifies is a sequence, and that is called bovin reaction series. Okay, so let's see what it is. So there are so let's say there is a magma, molten magma. Okay, so this molten magma when it starts to crystallize, it first crystallizes into olivine. Okay, you see olivine. Then there is pyroxenes, then there is amphibole, then there is biotite. Okay, and from this side, I'll explain all this in detail. Just first, let's get done with both the series. Then there is anorthite. Okay, then night. Then there is labradorite. There is andesite. Then this is oligoclase. Then there is albite. Okay, and there is potash, muscovite, quartz, zeolite. Okay, now now you see in detail. So let's see. There is this olivine here. Okay, there is pyroxene here then there is amphibole so this this series you this series is called discontinuous reaction series now why it is called discontinuous because the structure of olivine is completely different from the structure of pyroxene which is different from amphibole and which is again different from biotite biotite is actually mica shade silicate so what is happening when olivine see so this all reaction starts at 1400 degrees celsius around 1400 degrees celsius okay so you now when olivine uh, crystallizes okay and it is there in the system and when the temperature is still cools down so olivine changes its structure and becomes pyroxene and if it is pyroxene is there in the system first it will form mg pyroxene and then iron pyroxene and when iron pyroxene is present in the system and temperature still goes down it converts into amphibole and then it converts into biotite and then it's convert in, converts into potassium. So every time the structure itself is changing. So that's why this is called a discontinuous series. And uh, this one, this series here you see is called continuous series. And and this series and this series here you call a continuous series because here the structure is same, but just the composition is changing. Okay, so it starts with anorthite. You see, it starts with anorthite, which is calcium rich. Then it goes all the way down to albite, which is NA rich. And in between, there is different composition. Okay, slowly calcium is decreasing, NA is increasing, NA is increasing, and this. And then you see these two merge. These two series merge here. And then it goes down. So this is also discontinuous because continuous and uh, discontinuous and continuous meet here and they again form a discontinuous series so this is a part of a discontinuous series from till h2o this solution okay so and this take place is around 573 degrees celsius for quartz so this is what bovin reaction series is all about okay how it crystallizes okay so this sequence you have to remember so for remembering this uh, olivine pyroxene amphibole and biotite you can remember a mnemonic you can say old pupil are boring O for olivine, pupil or pyroxene, A for amphibole and B for biotite. 
Okay, so old people are boring. <laughs> Grandfather was one of the most interesting person I know. But just for the just for remembering it, you can say you can remember it as old people are boring. Okay, now moving on. Crystallization of magma. So crystallization of magma depends on temperature at or the rate at which it is cooling. So if that if it is cooling very fast, then crystallization will be oh, of high speed, make very quick crystallization. Then it depends on viscosity. So where how fast is the magma flowing? So viscosity is high. Then uh, the 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 discontinuous reaction series will be more dominant because the precipitate will stay there within the within the solution. So because the solution is moving very slow, then there is composition. Then there is concentration of gases dissolved in it. Then pressure. So all these factors are involved. Okay. Then there is this term called differentiation. What is differentiation? They to start with there is always a homogeneous magma. Now this homogeneous magma is split into different types of rocks. Now this different types of rock depends on rate of cooling and settling or separation of heavy minerals. So this is called differentiation. So homogeneous things separating into different types is called differentiation, depending on rate of cooling and settling or separation of heavy minerals. Now process involved here is fractional crystallization, gravity separation. So fractional crystallization is that when uh, a certain type of uh, rock is crystallized or mineral crystallized, if it is fractionated out, then such kind of fraction is called fractional crystallization because it is occurring in parts. Then there is gravity separation to due to it due to its weight or heavy uh, specific gravity, the precipitate settles down and from the magma. So this is called gravity separation. It is differentiated in that form. Then there is filter pressing. Filter pressing is nothing but uh, there is a, there is a structure. There is a solid structure which is formed some crystal and in between there are spaces in which liquid is trapped. So by filter pressing uh, by pressing of a high amount of pressure, this liquid oozes out of the system and separates. So this is a kind of differentiation. Liquid immiscibility means there are two liquids which are formed within that magma. At different temperatures, and they are immiscible means they do not dissolve in each other. There and hence they are differentiated. So this is a kind of differentiation and gaseous transfer. That is very easy to understand. If gas is transferred from the magma out of the system, then it is differentiated. Or okay. So these are the things. Next is assimilation. So in assimilation can occur in three ways. First, mechanical incorporation without any chemical reaction. In this, the magma acquires. Another part of or some another rock within itself physically there is no chemical reaction involved. This is called mechanical assimilation, the partial incorporation reaction and replacement of a solid phase by another some solid phase in magma is replaced by some other solid phase. This is called assimilation, and if there is a total dissolution and total disappearance of solid phase from the uh, magma, this is uh, called another type of assimilation. Okay. So this is it. Next, we have factors on which effect, which are affecting or assimilation depends on. So temperature actually, temperature plays a very key role during assimilation or reaction series because the reaction happens at assimilation or reaction happens at interface. So temperature at the interfaces at the time of intrusion is important. Composition of inclusions, what what all is accumulated or assimilated composition is important concentration of volatiles in the magma is important now for example if we see reaction between a granitic composition and gabbroic wall so let's say there is this gabbroic wall okay there is this gabbroic wall and this side here is the granitic composition so what will happen gabbroic wall and granitic composition what reaction this there will be a very complex reaction but as we know that gabbro is crystallized at a very high temperature and then in the presence of this acidic magma which is at low temperature this uh, the plagioclases or the uh, com compound present in the gabbroic wall will acquire or get assimilated into this magma uh, this liquid uh, liquid magma granitic granitic composition and convert itself to this so this kind of reaction will take place okay so it will the it will come towards albite okay from uh, labradorite composition so it will acquire composition of the magma the granitic composition okay so this kind of reaction will take place so this is what all magma bovin series 
differentiation and estimation is all about and next we will understand QA PF diagram AKF diagram and then we will go into directly into the binary phase and ternary phase diagram which is a very important section of this uh, igneous petrology so till then keep waiting <laughs> I'll upload the video soon okay thank you bye for now subscribe to know your planet better